four. Having the walls already primed means there's less chance of getting paint on the woodwork, like the doors. And we'll start installing those now. When you buy doors for new construction, chances are they'll already be pre-hung on their jams. And the casing or trim will already be attached to the side. Now you can plumb up the hinge side and nail it in place. You nail through the casing, through the drywall, and into the studs around the door. Then you square up the rest of the jam. We know that the door itself is square, so we move the frame until the clearance is the same all the way around the door. We're using an air-powered finishing nailer. This sets the nails a little below the surface of the trim. The nails we've installed so far don't support the jam, strictly the casing. We still need to secure the jams to the rough framing, and we'll start by putting shims in the gaps behind the jam. Once the shims are in place, we nail through them, securing the jam to the studs. When the frame is shimmed and nailed, we break off the shims. The trim will eventually cover these broken ends. Extra trim comes with the doors, and it's identical to the trim that's attached to the frame on the other side, except it has to be cut to length. So I cut this piece to length and put a 45 degree miter up at one end. This trim gets set back a quarter of an inch from the edge of the jam, so I line it up and nail it in place. If you've done your measuring and cutting properly, the joint between the pieces should be perfect. When you have different types of doors, you have different installation techniques. For instance, we're using bifold doors on our closets, and two types of jams can be used for this. A full jam would be like what we installed for our swinging door, but we're going to be using a half jam here. The front of the opening has an unfinished drywall corner, but the back has been wrapped with drywall and a corner bead. This inch and 3 eighths wide stop goes at the front of the jam flush with the finished wall. Here we use shims to hold the stops tight to each other and to the frame before we nail anything. We want to make sure that the stops are flush with the wall, so I use a combination square as I nail. Then the casing goes around the front of the opening. Like the swinging doors, these pieces are mitered on the corners. We're going to hold up on the rest of the installation of this bifold door. That's because we still need to put baseboards in, and it's a lot easier to put them inside the closet if the doors aren't up. A pocket door is a whole other set of problems. Now remember, the frame's already in. It's actually part of the wall. And like the bifold door, we won't install the door itself for a while. What we want to do now is install the trim around the opening. Just like our other doors, we put casing around both sides. However, this casing is going to go flush with the jam. There won't be a quarter inch reveal. The casing is flush with the jam because the stop will come right up next to it.
I won't install the door itself until we know a little bit more about the height of the ceramic tile. And to install the door, I'll have to remove the stops. So I left the nails sticking out just a little bit. When we ordered the trim for the doors, we ordered enough for the windows as well. And the installation for the window trim is about the same as it is for the doors. The corners are mitered, and we nail the trim into the window frame and also through the drywall and the rough framing. The final element of the trim is the baseboard. Our baseboard is the same style millwork as the door and window casing. But how and when we mount the baseboard depends on the type of floor we're putting it on top of. Here in the family room, we'll have hardwood flooring. So the baseboards will go on after the floor's down. But we want to delay putting the floor down as long as possible so it won't get all scratched up during the rest of construction. Now the bedroom gets carpet, so we can install the baseboard now. But we want to keep that 3 eighths of an inch off the floor. This will look best once the carpet and carpet pad are installed. And to maintain that 3 eighths inch distance, I set small blocks across the floor and rest the baseboard on these as I nail it in. These nails need to go into the studs so I've marked the stud locations on the floor. When two pieces are joined, we make a 45 degree miter cut and we splice the pieces over a stud. This is so the ends of both pieces can be nailed down. Alright, we have a tricky cut coming up here. We have to coat this next piece so it fits tightly to our first piece. This means cutting a 45 degree miter on one end of the piece. Then I take a coping saw and use the edge of the miter cut as a guide to back cut the shape of the baseboard so the two pieces meet perfectly in the corner. Next I have to put baseboards in around the inside of the closet. It seems like this should be a pretty quick little job, but actually, It'll take just as long as a whole room, except the pieces are just a little shorter. 